I think when it comes to muscle groups, owning a well-developed, muscular set of quads is the best way to earn widespread respect, especially in fitness circles. This is because not only do they create that highly revered X-frame look and the illusion of a smaller waist, they also imply a strong work ethic, with trainees skipping leg day being the butt of many jokes and memes. But before we can cover the most effective way to train the quads for growth, we need to cover their basic anatomy first. The quadriceps femoris muscle, or quads for short, is composed of four main muscles. Their names inform their anatomy, so most laterally, or outside, is the vastus lateralis. Most medially, or inside, is the vastus medialis, with the vastus intermedius sort of sitting in between the two. These three muscles originate on the femur and ultimately insert on the tibia via the patellar tendon, and they collectively function to extend the knee or straighten the leg, like in a leg extension. Lying over top of these three is the beefy rectus femoris, which functions to extend the knee as well, but because it inserts higher up on the hip bone, it also performs hip flexion, making it a biarticular muscle, acting on two joints. Recent cadaveric studies have identified smaller fifth and sixth muscles in this group, but we won't focus on these. The three vastus muscles are a pretty even split of type 1 and type 2 fibers, indicating that a variety of high reps and low reps should be used. And multiple studies indicate that the rectus femoris is more type 2, or fast twitch dominant, meaning it may respond better to heavier loads. If I could pick just one exercise for the quads, it would be the squat. Studies have repeatedly shown that while it may not be the best glute builder, the quads are very highly active in the squat, and given its high potential for progressive overload and general strength development, the squat is a staple. Front squats are often used to increase quad emphasis, which makes sense biomechanically, since torque requirement at the knee is greater due to the more upright lifting position. Additionally, a 2016 study from Contreras and colleagues found that vastus lateralis, or outer sweep activation, was about 21% greater during front squats than back squats to parallel. Furthermore, a 2015 study from Yavis et al. showed greater vastus medialis, or teardrop activation, with a one rep max front squat than a one rep max back squat. And since the front squat can achieve similar, or perhaps greater, activation with lighter loads than the back squat, it could be ideal for those with knee problems, since compressive forces are lower on the knee. So what about squat depth? Well, a 2013 study from Bloomquist and colleagues compared quadriceps hypertrophy after 12 weeks of training with a shallow squat or a deep squat. Using MRI, they found that muscle cross-sectional area was greater at every single site measured for the deep squat group and the shallow squat group didn't see any increase in size at all for four of the six quad sites. The Contreras paper from earlier also hints toward quad activation increasing with increasing depth. Although it didn't reach statistical significance, both peak and mean quad activation was higher with the full squat than the parallel squat. But for all that, I think looking at the research as a whole, it seems that as long as you're going to at least parallel, you're hitting the majority of your quad building potential. And I see ass to grass squats as a suggested but not mandatory technique for growth. In short, good advice is to squat as deeply as you comfortably can with good form based on your mobility and experience level. So what about stance width? Well, a 1998 study out of Illinois State University showed that squats with 75% and 140% of shoulder width resulted in the same EMG activation pattern across all heads of the quads. Two later studies in 2001 and 2009 respectively also showed no difference between one and two times shoulder width indicating that since stance width doesn't affect quad activation, you should squat with a stance that allows you to reach an appropriate depth comfortably and safely. And this should extend to similar exercises such as the leg press. And while the barbell squat is a well-researched, tried and true favorite, exercises like lunges and step-ups have shown very similar levels of activation to the squat, with the step-up actually outperforming the squat for vastus lateralis, or outer sweep activity, in one 2009 study. Of course, going off EMG data alone, the simple leg extension would be king, especially for the rectus femoris muscle. But since its potential for progressive overload is much lower, it should be added as an adjunct isolation exercise, providing additional quad emphasis after performing a compound lift first. Interestingly, two studies independently found that vastus lateralis, or outer sweep activation, was higher with the toes pointed in, while rectus femoris activity was higher with the toes pointed out. Taken together, it seems that vastus medialis, or teardrop activation, is similar with inward, neutral, and outward toe positions. So if your goal is to develop an outer sweep, pointing the toes in is smart, but in practice, you should use whatever foot position allows you to feel the best mind-muscle connection. A common concern with leg extensions is risk of knee injury, 
And while it's true that both shearing force and ACL stress potential are high with this exercise, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld states that the aforementioned factors should not have a detrimental effect on someone with healthy knee joints, provided the exercise is performed properly. And he could even make a case that it might help to maximally strengthen these structures to a greater extent than other exercises. However, leg extensions would be contraindicated for those with existing knee problems, particularly when they involve the ACL. Strengthening the antagonistic hamstring muscles is also well advised for injury prevention when using this movement. According to volume expert Dr. Mike Isertel, most trainees will respond optimally with 12 to 18 weekly sets, including squat volume, with volumes above 20 sets typically causing recovery issues. For frequency, his suggestion is 1.5 to 3 times per week with 1.5 denoting one very high volume session with one low volume mini session per week. I personally find a two times per week frequency with one heavy day focused on strength development primarily in the four to eight rep range and one higher volume light day with reps in the eight to 20 range is practical for maximizing quad development for most. So if you put these sound scientific principles to practice with consistent effort, a strong mindset and steady focus on strength progression, an impressive set of quadriceps femoris muscles are waiting to be built. All right, what is going on everyone? I just wanna say thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, before you guys click out just yet, I have three quick items I'd like to get to. First, I have to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Uh, Squarespace has been sponsoring a lot of the Science Explained content on this channel and I really appreciate that. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, Squarespace is the website platform that I've been using for the last over two years now to run my online coaching business and it's also the platform I use to sell all of my standoff training programs. And over the weekend I actually ran a Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale on all my programs and <laughs> Squarespace is just so simple and easy to use that it only took me about 10 minutes to set the whole thing up. So if you guys are looking to set up your own website or run your own online store, Squarespace is the service that I recommend. And you can save 10% off your first purchase by going to squarespace.com forward slash nippered and using the offer code nippered at checkout. They have amazing, beautiful designer custom templates and they also have 24 seven customer support. So if you ever get stuck on anything, you can just contact them and they'll help you out right away. Number two, I've been getting a lot of requests for a lower body specialization program, uh, but I'm not releasing that one just yet. Uh, I do plan to release a full body program in January that'll include every body part. And also I wanted to just allude to the fact that I know I made a big deal out of squats in this video. And some of you may notice that I don't actually do a lot of squatting myself. Uh, that's due to a previous injury. And I didn't wanna give the impression that you need to squat in order to build big quads. There are certainly other exercises you can use. However, if you are gonna use say a hack squat or a leg press to sort of fill in that gap, you also need to make sure that you're hitting the muscle groups that aren't being targeted quite as much with those exercises. Um, so one thing that comes to mind is the spinal erectors and kind of the posterior chain in general. You get a lot of work for the posterior chain out of the squat, not quite so much out of the leg press. So you may wanna add in, say a lower back extension or a barbell hip thrust, or if you can deadlift, definitely include a deadlift. But I didn't wanna give the impression that it was mandatory because I think for hypertrophy, there really are no mandatory exercises. That's gonna conclude this video, guys. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you happen to be new, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.